restful waters. We don't even know how to how to have give our own self peace, y'all. Many of us are walking around here in a state of confusion. Back in the day, the Temptations had a song that said, "It's just a ball of confusion." We we living in a ball of confusion. Our minds are in total disarray. This is going on. That's going on. This happening. That's happening. We don't know what to do. God has to make us and has to lead us beside still and peaceful waters. He had, oh my God, he refreshes and restores my life, myself, because I can't do it. I cannot restore and refresh my own life. I cannot restore and refresh myself. I don't know how to do that. I have tried to do it, but I couldn't do it. Why? Why couldn't I do it? Because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Now watch this. In all of your ways. In all of your ways. Repeat. In all of your ways. One more time. In all of your ways. I'm going to say it seven times. In all of your ways. That's five. In all of your ways. Six. In all of your ways. Seven. Why did I say seven? The number of completion. In all of your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Because when you fail to do so, when you go on and do your own thing, uh, the Bible speaks to that as well. That was Proverbs 3, 5, 6 that I just spoke into your hearing. Now I'm going to speak Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25 into your hearing as well. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. That's why I cannot refresh and restore myself. I cannot, I, I, I can't do it for myself. Because my ways, the way of my going, will lead me into a pathway of death. But when I trust God, this is what he does. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Uh-huh. Uprightness and right standing with him. Not for my earning it. That's his grace, y'all. God's unmerited favor. But for his name's sake. And his name's sake is Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is the grace of God that was given unto man. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe upon him should not perish, but have eternal life, uh, uh, everlasting life. That's John 3.16. But here's the scripture where I say that he gave of himself. Amen. Jesus. Romans 5.8. But God commended his great love for us, that while we were still sinners, we did not marry. We were still sinners. Christ died. The Messiah, the anointed one, he died for us. Lord have mercy. Yes, though I walk through the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. That's why we don't, we're never alone, y'all. No matter what the situations and circumstances are, you're never alone. Because even though you're walking through the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, you don't fear or dread evil. God is not the author of fear, but of a sound mind. For you are with me. God says, I will never leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. Yes, those that are near and dear to us will forsake us. God knows they will. It's not his intent, but they do. But we are serving a God that promises in his word, I will never leave you for, or forsake you. And what do we know about God's word? Well, let me help you understand it. Let's go to Numbers. Let's go to Numbers. Amen. And I'm almost done. And y'all know where I'm going if you know anything about me and, and how I minister the word of God. We're in Numbers 23, 19. And the word of God says this. God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. Neither the son of man, that's the small s and a small m, that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? That's why he's a God that you can rely upon. That's why you can trust him in his word when he says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. That's why when he says that, yea, do I walk through the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will feel dread no evil for you are with me. And not only that, he says this. Now that's his word, y'all. That's his word. But he backs up his word with more word. And y'all know where I'm going if you know me. We're in Isaiah 55 and, and we're going to start off with verse uh, uh, 8. And this is the reason why we can bank on God's word and not anybody else's. Because, he, he, well, here we go. For my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
I'm going to read that again for your hearing and understanding. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. And he's going to make the distinction as to why there's a difference. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And you know what? We can't reach uh, um, or, or the level where God is. We tried it once before. Remember the Tower of Babel? They built the tower, y'all, trying to reach God. God saw what them nitwits was doing, and he knocked down their tower and confused their languages. Then they scattered all over the earth, and that's where you get people all over the world with the different languages. Uh, Minister Verner, uh, Verner uh, 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 that's why the, the language that you speak in the Philippines, it came from the Tower of Babel. Amen. And here we go. For as the he yeah, that there we go. Verse 10. For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again. That's just a truism, y'all. Understanding what happens when it rains and it snows. It don't go back up to heaven. It don't come back there again. But water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout. That's what it's designed to do. God does not do anything without purpose, y'all. We are a people of purpose. He is a God of purpose. That it may give and seed to the sower and bread to the, to the eater. That's the, that's the ultimate purpose of it. Now watch what God says about his word. Verse 11, 55, 11, Isaiah. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And that's what we have to understand about God. So what is he saying here? Let's go back to Psalm 23. And I'm almost done, y'all. Praise God. I'm almost done. We thank God for um, the message this morning um, that we don't have to, amen, we don't have to uh, ever be alone. We don't have to ever live alone. Amen. Uh, uh, and I'm going to conclude here very soon. Let's go finish up Psalm 23. Uh, yeah, you are with me, you're right. Verse 5 is a very important verse. Watch this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, 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 now that's an awesome God. And the word awesome should only be associated with God, y'all. Don't associate it with people. Don't associate it with your accomplishments or anything of that nature or, or, or something that you are admiring. There's, not, there's no one awesome but God. And that's an awesome thing that God does right there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And why does he do that? You anoint my head with oil. My, my brimming cup runs over. Well, the reason why he's able to do that, we go back up to verse 6. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the deep sun, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. For you are with me. Your rod to protect, your staff to guide, they comfort me. So that's why he can prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And that's significant in and of itself. Because what, God, what the word of God says that them that keep their minds stayed on Jesus... He will keep you in perfect peace. Them that keep their minds stayed on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. That's especially important for when you get into that place where you feel that you're alone. You feel that you've been forsaken by those that you did not believe that would forsake you. When you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. And even if you end up in the camp of your enemies... That's all right. He's going to prepare a table right before them. And this is what you should do. We, this, we had this minister to us several years ago here in Wilmington, Delaware, by this pastor named, uh, 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 oh my God, Youngblood, uh, uh, out of Brooklyn, New York, amen. Uh, the, might have been the Bronx. And he ministered on this here particular verse. And he said that he, he had a problem understanding why God would prepare a table for him in the presence of his enemies and why he didn't prepare it in a place that was more comfortable for him. And so what he did was he asked everybody that was there, and this was hundreds that was in this room, y'all. He said, how many of you are friends with people now that you weren't friends with before? Everybody raised up their hands. And understand this. There were people in that room that had been preaching the gospel for 30, 40, 50 years. And some that were young, some had only been in the ministry as, as, as short a time as I was. Amen. And, and this was in 2012, August of 2012. So I've been in the ministry then about six. I've been saved 16 years by that time. And have been preaching 11 years. Amen. Uh, that coming September. So, so when, he, when he said that, he said, well, this is what God told him. When he asked God that, he says, young, this is what I want you to see. When you start to look at 
the table that I prepared for you in, your, in, in the presence of your enemies, your enemies, your enemies will start looking at what you're looking at. And when they start to look at what you're looking at, I'm going to transform them. That's why. This is the key, y'all. Too many times, we put too much emphasis on the works of the devil and not the power of God. The Word of God says this. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The Word of God says this. If God be for you, who can be against you? The Word of God says this. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. So why do you want to put emphasis on somebody who's already defeated? The song that we sing in the church is it. Say it undefeated. Hallelujah. Say it undefeated. Hallelujah. If you understand that, if you know that to be so, then why are you looking at your enemies and not the table that God has prepared for you? Enjoy what God has prepared for you in the midst of your enemies. And when you do that, God will take care of your enemies. Why? The battle ain't yours. It's the Lord's. Lord, have mercy. You never have to live. We never have to live alone. Okay, here we are. We're almost done. Surely your only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. That's why I'm never feeling alone, y'all. I got goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. And through the length, and through the length of my days, the house, uh, uh, through the length of the days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. That's right. I'm going to dwell within the house of the Lord for the rest of my days. The word of God says it's in him that I live and have my very being. Amen. I am connected to the source. Jesus Christ says I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. But my favorite New Testament scripture says this. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Why? Because I'm not doing it on my own strength. I'm not doing it on my own might. I'm never alone. We never have to live alone. Amen. All we have to do is continue to maintain that faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will always be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And in your times of trouble, cry out unto the Lord. And he will comfort you. Amen. He will comfort you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will protect you. He will watch over you. He will shelter you. Lord have mercy in the midst of the storm. Y'all know what happened. Um, Jesus Christ was on the boat. I'm, I'm done. Jesus Christ was on the boat. And he was on the part of the boat where I guess it was the stern uh, sleeping. His disciples were on another part of the boat. And there was a storm that was raging. And they were freaking out. Because they thought that the boat was going to capsize and the storm was going to have them destroyed. Like, they were fishermen, so they, they know that, that, that kind of environment. And when a storm is raging like that, that it's not good for anybody to be out there on the waters like that. So they came and woke up Jesus and said, Master, are you not concerned that we might die? And Jesus looked at them and said, what's wrong with y'all? Well, you have little faith. And then he spoke to the seas and the winds and said, peace, be still. And then the disciples said... What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? When you're in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are secured in his, in, in his salvation, you are never alone. You absolutely are never alone. And God has a way. Even when in the natural, when our natural families are, 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 are forsaken us, our natural families, be they parents, uh, siblings, uh, spouses, when they forsake us, God has rams in the bush. That's why he created the spiritual family. That's why we are connected to one another in Christ. Uh, amen. And that's why he joins us together. That's why the Bible says, forsake not the fellowship of one another. Amen. Oh, how sweet it is for brothers to uh, 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 fellowship with one another. Come, in, come together in fellowship and communion with one another. That's why, again, uh, when you're in the body of Christ, it's not time that when you hurt, I hurt. The Bible says that we are many members of but one body. And how can one member say that he don't need the other? How can the eye say it don't need the foot? How can the hand say it don't need the leg? If one hurt, the rest hurt. 
That's why we have to be able to go to one another and confess your